and start with today's topic. Uh, first, let's understand what bias is. Okay. So, what do you guys think uh, when I say, okay, we have this data and we are training a model? So, what exactly is that model? Okay. So, this is the goal of machine learning. Up, now coming to bias. Bias. Okay. So, I'm fitting a linear model in three cases. Okay. So, this is bias. Okay. How far we are from the original truth. Now, coming to variance. Got it. So, I'll write a quick definition here. So this is the definition of bias and variance. Okay. So we can start with today's topic. Uh, so uh, it's bias variance trade-off and hyperparameter tuning. <clears throat> so these two things we'll go through today. And uh, the first one is uh, only a concept. And second one is a very simple technique to improve your model. So uh, first, let's understand what bias is. Okay. Or before that. So what do you guys think uh, when I say, okay, we have this data and we are training a model. So what exactly is that model? So as of now, it looks like a formula that uh, our variables follow, right? So it's something like this. So let's say there is an actual formula fx. Okay, this is real, real formula. Okay, y equal to fx. And let's take this sine of x. Okay, y equal to sine of x. So it has a graph like this. Something like this, correct? Now, uh, this is the real formula. And we never get to know the real formula. Okay, see what exactly the real formula is. We will get data. Okay, we'll only get data. And it will be like these points with a little bit of noise. Matlab, of course, when data is generated in the real world and it is collected it's not actually perfect it is like there are there is always some noise let's say we get this data now we don't know that it follows sine x there is no way to know that it follow sine x okay so what is the goal of machine learning goal of machine learning is to estimate okay it's to estimate the real formula we can never find the real formula but we can estimate the real formula using machine learning so we have multiple models. Okay. So if we assume that, so we have only this much amount of data, but for this much portion only. Okay. Before that, we don't have any data. After that, we don't have any data. So what's the assumption we are taking? So what kind of model can I fit here? So we will say that our assumption will be y hat equal to something, let's say mx plus c. Okay. And after training, we can find the value of m and c. Okay. So the formula that we are predicting is this. Okay, because we have only this much information. Okay, so this is the goal of machine learning. Up to uh, to estimate the exact formula. Okay, now what we can do is first, what's the way to improve this? Are we like after training and testing for this data, we are fine. We are saying model performs good. But let's say in future the range increases, the range of x increases. In case, mein kya hoga? In that case, the data will be generated like this because really it does not follow linear. Okay, then what do we do? Up to linear kaam nahi karega. We can train a degree three model, right? Which will like x cube, x square, which will include that. So finally, we will get something like this. Okay. X cube can be like this. So that's the point. Like we never know the original formula. We always try to estimate it. Okay. And the best way to estimate something is to just uh, have more data points. Okay. The more data points we have, the closer we can get to the original formula. So that's the first and most important thing about machine learning that for training a good model, you need data. Okay. So for these machine learning algorithms, that's fine. You can manage with small amount of data also, but uh, with neural networks and stuff, you need very large amount of data. Okay. And that's the reason that they became famous only after 2010. Okay. They were created in 1990s, but they were, uh, they came into limelight after 2010 because data was not there earlier but after 2010 there is a lot of data there was a data boom okay and we are able to like train neural networks and uh, they are really good is that clear guys so this is the goal now coming to bias bias okay so uh bias and variance uh, they are calculated based on what models we are training okay multiple multiple models we are training it depends on that okay so i'll start with the bias so let's say uh we are trying to estimate f f, f 
f is basically the original function f x okay so we are trying to estimate f okay so and estimator of f okay so we will train multiple model and the best one is expected value of f okay expected value of f okay this is what we are finding expected value of f let's call this g of f sorry g of x so original formula is f and the model that we have created that we have estimated is g okay so bias is nothing but the difference between these two okay it's original minus predicted that's it this is bias in simple terms if i explain you never uh, will have to calculate this thing but in simple terms if i say it's how different our model is from the actual model and i really want you guys to quickly suggest me a way to calculate this and we already calculate this to be honest in every model that we train so how how can we calculate this because we don't know what f is i'll repeat bias is simply how different we are from the original truth how far we are from the original truth so based on the past classes can you tell me what exactly the bias is we have already calculated it this is the hint yes or no because data is the only thing we have that represents the actual formula okay so why why is the target variable and it is what that's reflecting the actual formula f and y hat is something that reflects the estimated formula g okay from f we have y and we need to calculate bias bias is f minus g okay which is y minus y hat which is training loss getting this guys now three cases so i am fitting a linear model in three cases case number 1 and so which case is the bias highest so we can tell about the lowest lowest will be here because we have estimated almost correct formula okay this one will have high bias but okay still I, according to me this should have highest bias because there is no relation between x and y and still we are assuming something and here it's uh, like this is some relation like it is a square kind of relation but still we are trying to fit a uh, linear so it gave, it will give some error but we cannot say to be honest which which will have high bias high bias simply means that we are assuming something which is wrong and it is true in both the cases here also linear relation is not there here also linear relation is not there so both will have high bias i won't say highest anywhere i'll just say high okay high bias okay so this is bias the how far we are from the original truth now coming to variance so what is variance so let's say um so variance is simply that part ki if i change my data uh, slightly if i change my data slightly how will my model change theek hai let's say i have 150 points okay in my data set i took 50 random 50 points i trained my model i took another 50 points again i trained my model and i'll keep on doing this i'll take random 50 points and i'll train my model okay so this is the thing and i'll train same model so i let's say a first experiment i will do with linear regression second i'll do with polynomial regression with degree 2 and i'll keep on increasing the degree like i'll go till degree 10 let's say okay i'll keep on doing this so you will notice something and it will be like this so let's say for linear i take these four points okay these seven points okay so my model will look like this yes now if i take these points my model will still look like this something thoda sa change hoga if i take another points like another set of points something like this so i'll get a line like this yes now on the contrary this is degree 1 degree 1 means only linear relation like x to the power 1 is the maximum power okay second case same thing first model i'll train is let's say degree 10 uh like i'll i'll do the same experiment for degree 10 so can you guys uh think of how what kind of graph will it be like there will be x to the power 10 x to the power 9 all sort of things so how will the graph look something like this yes or no of course we don't know even i assume something but it will be like it will try to fit all, fit all the points now second part of the experiment i take these points now my model will be like this so how much similarity can you see between two models between the first model that i trained the second model i haven't changed anything in the model uh, constraints like it's a degree 10 model same model i'll just fit again with the new data that's all 
so what do you see here the difference yeah so so the final model that we take so how we cal calculate variance variance is like variance is calculated like this so mean value of g matlab so these are all g's g's matlab ki the estimated model okay Th there is no relation with the real model here variance is all about what uh, it's it's the calculation depends on all the estimators only okay so this is the first g model this is the second g this is the third g so so on yahan pe bhi there will be multiple g's okay and then there will be a mean g okay so it will be like this this is the mean estimator like mean of all of these so it will be like this same here there will be a mean of uh, this so it will some it will go something like this okay and variance is calculated normally like it's uh, the formula for variance was uh, do you guys remember the variance formula so let's say i train 10 10 such models so n will be 10 okay if i train 10 such models so basically the point is how my model vary when i change my data slightly yahan pe maine bahut zyada data change nahi kiya tha same here i haven't changed my data very much but my model changed very much here and my model was stable here so this is low variance this is high variance got it so i'll write a quick definition here so f is the real relation g so this is the definition of bias and variance okay yeah?